Hey, that works for me. We don't have hay fever. We got lots of flowers up here today. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Judy. Good morning. Good morning. Isn't it an absolutely beautiful, beautiful day today? It has been the last few. It's supposed to be tomorrow, and then we return to living in Chicago again. So uh, we just we just take it while we can, right? Uh, I have a couple of announcements to bring to your attention. Uh, first is next Sunday we will be uh, uh, we will be celebrating Totenfest uh, for visitors, for new people. That's a time the last Sunday in October. <laughs> Uh, right before All Saints Day, when we remember those uh, members of the congregation and friends of the congregation uh, who have died in the last year uh, just during a service of remembrance. If you have anybody that you would like remembered, contact the office. Uh, just give Wendy their name and, and how they're related to you. Um, and, and it doesn't, like I said, doesn't have to be even a, a family member of yours, grandma, grandpa, aunts, uncles, or anything, uh, you know, close friends, anybody you've lost that you would like uh, to have remembered, we would, uh, we would encourage you to, to send them in. Uh, and also, uh, this year on the 20th of November, at 3 in the afternoon, we're going to be celebrating Thanksgiving with the folks from uh, St. John's UCC in Mokina. Uh, their pastor Rocky and I have been talking and we're going to try it here and then we're hopefully it's going to become an annual thing and then we'll just go back and forth between the churches. So this year we'll be the host church and you'll hear about, about more, more about that later. But um, my feeling is the people of St. John's will have just listened to Rocky pontificate and you will have just listened to me here that Sunday. So coming back at three o'clock, it seems kind of pointless for us to to get up here and bore you all again, so we're going to try something different. I'm encouraging everybody, and there's something in the key, and you'll hear more about it, and you'll get, uh, get information uh, in the bulletin starting next year, excuse me, next week. But what I'm encouraging people to do, what I'm imploring people to do, is take pictures of, of things around you that you are thankful for. All right? Sound easy? Yes? Here's the caveat. I don't want pictures of your family. We all know we're thankful for our family. This is going to be one of those exercises that is encouraging people to look outside themselves, uh, to look outside the box. What are the things that you see around the world that maybe you've never seen before because you're not looking for them, but that, that when you see them, you just truly appreciate the gift that they are to you? Anything else is absolutely on the table, but I'm just telling people now, and Rocky's telling the people in St. John's, if you send pictures of spouses, grandchildren, grandpa, anybody like that, they will not be included. We're not hating on family. We're just trying to get people to think of different things. Questions about that? Yes, Miss Sylvia. I don't want to see any babies. I don't want to see. You, you. If you would have told me one person was going to ask to try to find a way to get around it, Sylvia would have been in the top two. And she wouldn't be number two either. She's off. <laughs> now, I, you, you see what I'm getting at, what I'm trying to get us to do? Just, just, you got a month to just look around you and see all the wonders of God's nature, of, of all the creation that we as human beings have done. I mean, just, just look around and, and allow the spirit to move you and to feel a sense of gratitude. 
You can call me if you have any questions. You've got my email if you want to send me dirty letters or texts saying what were you thinking and we shouldn't have to do that. That's fine. I get paid the big bucks. I can take it. But that's the way we're going to do it, okay? So, yes, dear. Oh, th th thank you. Uh, just send it to the church address, the church email address, uh, St. Peter's Frankfurt at gmail.com. And if you have any questions, you give Wendy a call during the week, or you can give me a call or give me a text and let me know and I can get back to you, okay? All right, thank you very much. Anything else that needs to be brought up for the good of the congregation at this time? Okay. Rejoice in the beauty of God's creation. God has blessed God's people with many gifts and promises, and we humbly give thanks to our God. Please join with me responsively in our call to worship. How lovely, <coughs> excuse me, how lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My flesh sings for joy to the living God. If you're able, I invite you to stand as we join together in when morning gilds the skies.
please join with me in the morning prayer. Righteous and gracious Lord, you reveal to us the way of goodness and life. Teach us humility that we may trust in your power and not our own, and make us ever grateful. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I invite you now to turn to those around you passing the peace of Christ on this glorious, glorious morning. a joyful time in the life of any congregation when we have the opportunity, when we have the privilege to invite new members that have uh, been led by God's Holy Spirit to become a part of our worshiping community. So at this time, I would invite Stephanie Holcomb and Madison Soderstrom and Jeff Miller to please come forward. Now you're fine. Friends in Christ, we all are received into the church through the sacrament of baptism. These people have found nurture and support in the midst of this family of Christ. And through prayer and study, they've been led by the Holy Spirit to affirm their baptism and to claim in our presence their covenantal relationship with Christ and the members of this church. They are here for service to Jesus Christ, using the gifts which the Holy Spirit bestows. Friends, you are no longer strangers and sojourners, but you are equally citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ alone being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple in Christ, in whom you also are built into it for a dwelling place in the Spirit of God. So Stephanie, Madison, and Jeff, do you desire to affirm your baptism into faith and family of Jesus Christ? If so, please respond, I do. And do you renounce the powers of evil and desire the freedom of new life in Christ? If so, please respond, I do. Do you profess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If so, please respond, I do. And do you promise, by the grace of God, to be Christ's disciples, to follow in the ways of our Savior, to resist oppression and evil, to show love and justice, and to witness to the work and the word of Jesus Christ as best you are able? If so, please respond, I promise, with the help of God. And do you promise, according to the grace given you, to grow in the Christian faith and to be a faithful member of the Church of Jesus Christ, celebrating Christ's presence and furthering Christ's mission in all the world? If so, please respond, I promise with the help of God. I promise with the help of God. By your baptism, you were made one with us in the body of Christ, the Church. Today we rejoice in your pilgrimage of faith which has brought you to this time and to this place. We give thanks for every community of faith that has been your spiritual home and we celebrate your presence in this household of faith. So do you promise to participate in the life and mission of this family of God's people, sharing regularly in the worship of God and enlisting in the work of this local church as it serves the community and the world if so, please respond, I promise with the help of God. So let us, the members of St. Peter's United Church of Christ, express our welcome and affirm our mutual ministry in Christ by standing, if you are able. Now you all turn around and face them, because they're talking to you. And please join me. Jeff. Madison and, St okay, you join with me, it's in bold, it says people, okay? 
What? Uh, <laughs> really, for that, you're all just looking at me? Jeff, Madison, and Stephanie. We welcome you with joy in this common life of this church. We promise you our friendship and prayers as we share the hopes and labors of the Church of Jesus Christ. By the power of the Holy Spirit, may we continue to grow together in God's knowledge and love and be witnesses of our risen Savior. Please be seated. Now I'd invite Helen Simpkins to come forward and representing the congregation as the council president. Stephanie. For Madison. Sorry, Jeff, I gotta get this right. I know, I know. And for Jeff. Yeah. The newest members of St. Peter's United Church of Christ. Oh, wait, wait. Oh, man. See, they got me so verklempt. Stay there. I'll come to you. I'm telling you, God help any of you if you make a mistake. I will stop the service. I forgot to give you your pins. There you go. We now come to that time in our service where we have the opportunity and the privilege to lift up our concerns and our joys, bringing them to our sisters and brothers as we share them with God. Yes, Jill. I won't say anything, but I can't promise you about these jackals, I'll tell you, though. Okay, what I was going to say, 70 years ago, on October 25th, 1952, you both, my, my mother and father-in-law, Betty and Norman Hasbach, made a sacred vow of faith, hope, and love. You have walked hand in hand, which has brought you both to this place and time. It takes the Lord to build a true love that lasts a lifetime. As you both reach this milestone in your lives, you are both wished the very best. You both are truly best. We love you both with all our hearts, and we thank you for being a prime example of forever. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Betty and Norm. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy. I have a joy to share and many thanks. Last Sunday was a glorious Sunday for the community of Frankfurt and especially for St. Peter's Church. Um, I just want to thank everyone who baked, who worked in the kitchen, who greeted, who took part in the planning of our special day. Um, it took a lot of people to make sure that we had everything in place. We used all our food. Um, so it was just a wonderful, wonderful day. We were able to show our community who we are as a church family. So thank you all. Thank you. Lord, in your mercy.
I want to thank Jill for such a wonderful thing she said about us. And we love them, and we wish them a very happy anniversary also. The same day, and yours is 14, right? So you got a little ways to go yet. <laughs> Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. No, 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 no. While she's coming around, we've got a whole bunch of flowers here. Hopefully you've, uh, you, you have noticed, and if you have hay fever, hopefully it hasn't impacted you. Uh, the yellow roses are the, something that St. Peter's does to welcome new members. So when you all leave, please, uh, please come up and take them with you as a remembrance of this day. Yes, Sylvia. Um, I noticed in the bulletin we have two birthdays to celebrate today. Well, that was the next one. So, okay. Uh, okay. Well, I know she's here. Oh, they're both Pinky and Marcia. Uh -huh. Yeah, Pinky's, you you Pinky's up in the cheap seats as far uh -huh. away from us as she can get. Uh huh. <laughs> Hoping we'd miss you, weren't you? <laughs> so yes, we, we have their birthdays, which are today, and, and we always try to remember special ones, even if they can't be there. Please tell uh, Kylie we said happy birthday, 21st birthday now, right? So another, uh, another few years, she'll be graduated from college and moving on with her own life, getting married and having kids, and well, don't tell her that part, yeah, okay. <laughs> so how about a happy birthday for Marsha and for Pinky? Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday dear Marsha and Pinky, may God bless you. Wait a minute Marsha. <laughs> Thank you, Lord in your mercy. So for these, uh, these concerns, these many joys that we have shared together, for the concerns and the joys that are, I know are in, in all of our lives and in all of our hearts and that we choose to shoot, share privately and quietly with God, I invite us now to bow our heads and be in a time and a spirit of prayer. And when I say during the prayer, Lord, in your mercy, I would ask you to respond as we always do, hear our prayer. Holy and loving God, giver of every good and perfect gift, giver of this glorious, glorious day, giver of this church and this faith community. Today we, we pray for the church in every place, that wherever people gather in your name, that you enable us to listen to each other with open hearts. Give your people unity, O oh God, Replace pride with reconciliation. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all people of every faith, for Muslims and Jews, Hindus and Buddhists, and the people of indigenous religions everywhere. We pray that their paths may lead with ours to greater understanding of the goodness of faith, in its many languages and many forms. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you for this amazing earth, for rich soils and abundant sunshine, and for all the food that you have made for our health and our enjoyment. We thank you for clean waters and fresh air, for towering trees and beautiful flowers for creatures that inhabit the waters and the birds of the skies, for animals of the wild and the pets of our hearts. Make us grateful for your gifts of nature so that we may protect them and cherish them as the true blessings that they are. Lord, in your mercy. Reassure us, O oh God, that your desire that you desire good for your world and all the people in it. 
and that your provisions are sufficient for all. Infuse us with a commitment to share with others, especially with those who do not have such riches and who today are hungry, without home and without clothes. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the leaders of our nation, for the leaders who struggle with drought and famine, destructive storms and lack of food or shelter, for leaders of peace movements and for those who do not know how to create a just society. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are suffering from the horrors of war, especially for the children who do not know the reason for their pain and have no power to change their situations. We pray for those called to serve, and especially for the families of those who have paid the ultimate price for freedom. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all those suffering from all forms of injustice, brokenness, or illness, and especially for all who have asked for the prayers of this congregation and for those whose well-being we hold in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. God of eternity, we know that all days are redeemed and held in your grace. We remember with honor and gratitude all those whose lives have enriched ours, and especially those whose faith has given shape to our own. Keep alive within us the hope and the promise of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Now into your hands, gracious God, we commend all those for whom we pray. Trusting in your mercy through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now hear these words from the Apostle Luke. Jesus also told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that They were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray. One a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee standing by himself was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people. Thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Hear what the Spirit says to the church. So humility and humbleness is is a big thing throughout the scriptures. And Jesus brought it up repeatedly in his messages and in his parables. And and I think Jesus was the living embodiment of what it meant to be a humble servant of God. 
Here was, was a person that had all the power of God's Holy Spirit in his hands. We read stories of, of Jesus going forth and and healing and curing, giving sight to the blind, allowing those that were lame to be able to walk. Folks that could not speak were now able to shout praise to God. And even, even the most devastated in that society, the lepers, he was able to make whole, to make pure, to make clean. Here was a person that spoke with the authority of God behind him. The God that when he was baptized said, you see this one right here? That's my boy. That's my son. I love him and trust him completely. Even, even him. He just, he just went from place to place. Now, does anybody doubt for a second but that Jesus could have used that power to become one of the most powerful and wealthiest people ever to exist on earth? And the answer has to be, no, we can't doubt it, because of course he could do that. That was... That was a choice that he had before him. And he could have been like this, this Pharisee. He could have looked up to God and said, thank you for not making me like them. These are some really bad and stupid people, and I'm glad I'm not one of them. And I'm so glad you gave me the power over everything because I'm going to take it. And when I'm done, they are going to worship me. They are going, well, maybe they're not going to love me, but they're still going to worship me. And I will make everything, everything the way it should be. Does anybody doubt but that he could have done that? See, and it's important that we understand that that was an option for him. Because one of the things we have to remember when we hear the words of Jesus, when we see, see how he lived his life and the choices that we made, it is absolutely essential that we remember that he was one of us. He was a human being. We know he was tempted because we read the stories in Scripture. We even know that he was not perfect because we have the story in scripture of him losing his temper when he said just a few chapters before, if you even think that your brother or sister is a doofus is as bad as killing them, and he called them all kinds of names, tore up the temple and cast out the money changers and those that sold sacrifices using a whip. Okay, so he was one of us. How many of us having that, that power at our disposal, having that spirit of God dwelling in us the way it did Jesus, how many of us would use it in such a way but to, well, to glorify us? To make our lives easier and the lives of those we love. How many of us would look down on the rest of the rest of humanity? That's, that's the lesson in this story today, I think. And, and it's, it's one that we all have to struggle with. I look around our gathered body today. And quite frankly, just about any time we all gather together as a family of faith. And I look upon the faces of individuals 
that are unbelievably blessed. I look at all of us and I see just, just what God has bestowed upon us. I look upon us as a nation. And I see a national entity that has been unbelievably blessed. In so, so many ways. And yet I see so many, so many of us, if, if not all of us at one time or another, looking down at the other people of the world. Well, we must be better because look what we have. So if, if the way that we can live our lives is not an example of God loving us, and making us better than everybody else, if it's not a reason for us to thank God every day that we're not like the rest of the world, what we need to realize is in God's eyes, every single one of us, without exception, in this gathered body, in the people that call themselves members of, of the United States of America, of any living being that draws breath. None of us, no matter our accomplishments or achievements, none of us are any better than that sinner. And in many, many, many ways, we should look at him and strive to live our lives as he did. Here was a person that was grateful, grateful beyond words for the mercy of God. And he recognized, he recognized that in the eyes of God, he is nothing but a lowly sinner. Now, my guess is, and this is obviously reading into the story, but we can't help but do that. My guess is that he would have been a fairly wealthy person by the very fact that he was a tax collector. And some of the wealthiest people in society were tax collectors, and they were wealthy at the expense of their neighbors, friends and family. Caesar wants $25 from everybody. That's your tax. He collects 40. Caesar doesn't care. What does Caesar want? $25. What happens to the other 15? It's his. That's the way society worked back then. That's why when we hear about tax collectors being so hated, tax collectors being seen as the epitome of sinfulness, that's why. Now, were there good ones? Of course there always are. But from everything that, that history shows us, from a text from that particular time, the majority of them did use it to their advantage. And very often bribed Caesar to get that position. So here we've got somebody that would have been, in the big scheme of things, a pretty, pretty big fish. Especially when he was taking money from from everybody else and keeping them subjugated. Now, I can't help but hope, this is the optimism, 
is that as this tax collector was here and was offering this prayer up, that he went on to confess his sins. That he realized at, at that moment that yes, I am a lowly sinner and I am deserving of nothing and I'm no better than anybody else, so why am I doing these things to them? I like to believe that as he, was, as he was praying, he was asking for God's, for the strength of God's Holy Spirit to help him to, to change his ways. I want to believe with all my heart that he left that, that temple on that day after this time of prayer and, and communion with God. And he went out and sought ways to make amends. Paying back people that he cheated, which would have been just about the whole village or the whole city or the whole town. That from that point on, he would have been a tax collector. But he would have been a fair tax collector. If $25 is what was expected to be paid to Caesar and to the empire, that he would collect $25. No more, no less. That he, he would not take advantage of people anymore. that he would see and realize and appreciate and be grateful for the many blessings he does have in his life. And one of them being, the, the, the greatest one being, that he is a child of God. And that no matter how egregious his sins may be, he will be forgiven if he asks. And he will be given the grace and the mercy and the strength to go from that, that point in his life to live a good and a faithful life. In our world today, I'm not going to pick on the world, in our country today, we have so many Pharisees. We have so many people that think that they're so much better than everybody else. That think they have some God-given right to everything that they have and all the power that they want. whom I sure do go to bed every night thanking God that they're not like the masses that they're trying to take advantage of. We have an unbelievable number of examples of how not to live. Examples of lives that, that are completely contrary to the teachings of Jesus Christ. The one that the vast majority of them that are doing this all proclaim to be their Lord and Savior. They just choose to forget all the other stuff you're supposed to do. What this world needs, what our country needs, right now more than anything are living examples, living embodiments of this tax collector. People who do not for a second see themselves better than anybody. No matter what their station in life may be or situation or predicament. 
people that see themselves as, as one of the masses, one of God's people. People who are willing to come and confess to God. Confess their, their faults and foibles and weaknesses. People that come to God and pray for the strength and the courage to change their lives. To find ways to be examples of, of what it means to strive, to strive to be a faithful follower of Christ Jesus. My hope and my fervent prayer is that such people can, can rise up and be counted. People that can stand up and look at all those around them and see one thing and one thing only. A beloved child of God. Each and every one. Folks that have chosen to be sinners. Each and every one that have made some bad choices or found themselves into some really unbelievably difficult situations. Some of their own doing and some the stuff just happens. People deserving of love, people deserving of respect if for no other reason then they are beloved children of God. We have within us, each and every one of us, the power, the strength, and the spirit to be just such people as this. What it takes is the willingness to humble ourselves, as this tax collector did. To admit to God our faults and our weaknesses. To pray for the strength to change them, and then to have the courage to go out and live lives. Live lives of humility. Live lives of service. Live lives of faith. As always, like it was with the Pharisee and like it was with the tax collector, the choice of how they lived their lives was theirs. The choice of how we live our lives is ours. How will we choose? Amen. So I invite all that are able now to please stand as we join together in the hymn, There's a Wideness in God's Mercy.
Please be seated. With humility for all that God has given us, let us gratefully give for the work of the church and the healing of this world. Please join with me in the prayer of dedication. God of creation, you water the earth and send forth food. You shower us with grace and feed us with your love. Accept these gifts, humble though they may be, and use them to spread your goodness throughout the earth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now let's join together in hymn number 532, Be Thou My Vision. Please join with me in the commission for the upcoming week. We go forth today to proclaim the goodness of God, 
to spread God's love with all, humbly giving thanks for our many blessings. We go forth humbly knowing that we are blessed so that we might be a blessing to all in need. Now let us sing, Let There Be Peace on Earth. Now may the Creator nurture you, the Teacher walk with you, and the Spirit strengthen you this day and evermore. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> 